Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today is episode number three in our GNS 530 series, the navigation menu, coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back everyone. So before we get started in today's tutorial, if you have not seen episode number one and two, links for those will be down below in the description. I highly recommend to check those out. I will also post a link up here in the top right for episode number one. If you haven't seen any of them, go ahead and click on that one and start there. Now that we've got that out of the way, I just want to go over some bits of terminology again that we were using in episode number one and number two. And I think it's about time we start calling these menus instead of chapters now. So now that you understand that, let's hop into today's tutorial. But before we do, if the video helps you out, go down below, hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash on that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. So hopping down here at the GNS 530, in the last episode, we already went over how to create a flight plan. So I've already gone and done that ahead of time, just to save us on some time. So in the navigation menu, we have five different pages that we can choose from. The first page is your default navigation page, and this is what comes up when we power up the GPS unit. On this page, we have a couple different things that we can do here, so let's go over what we can accomplish here on page number one. Over here on the right, we have the range up and down or in and out. Below that, we have the direct to button, and we have the menu button here. In the menus, we can do a couple different things here. We can change some of the fields that are displayed here, we can also change the way the GPS is tracking, either north up or tracking up. And we also have restore defaults. So if we do make any of the changes, we can reset everything. And we have restart GPS. It'll pretty much shut down the unit and turn it back on again. Let's go through these one by one. If we want to change any of the fields, all we have to do is highlight that. And we can use our knob down here on the lower right hand corner, the inner knob to change the cursor. We're gonna highlight the field, hit enter. Now we have a little cursor that's gonna populate over the individual fields. We can move that cursor around using the outer knob down here. Once we get on the field that we wanna change, now we can use the inner scroll knob to then change that field. So let's go ahead and set that to altitude. Once we find the one we want, we can just hit enter. It will now change that for us once we make all the necessary changes that we want to do here, we can just come over here and hit the clear button and presto, it's gone. Back in the menu, below the change fields, we have the north up or track up. So if we highlight that and then hit the enter button, well, you're going to see a couple things that are going to change here on the display. So our plane is always going to be facing upwards and that may not necessarily be north, which is why we have this cool compass rose here and that'll tell us what direction we are heading. Next in the menu, we have the restore defaults, and that's pretty self-explanatory. If we go down to restore defaults, remember we had changed this alt up here, hit the enter button, and it now turns everything back to the way it was. Now you understand all the different functions on the page one of the navigation menu. Let's move over to page number two. To do that, we're gonna come right down here to the lower right-hand knob on the GNS 530, and use the inner scroll knob to manipulate through the different pages. Now on page number two, you might say, well, this looks really familiar to page number one. Well, it kinda is and it kinda isn't. There's a couple different things that we can do here that you couldn't do on page number one. So let's go through those real quick. One of the things that is pretty neat about the GNS 530 is that any of the settings that we change in each of these pages are kind of page specific. So if we go back to page number one, you can see the zoom rate is out at 20 miles. And on page number two, we have our zoom rate at 10 miles. Also, if we take a look next to that 10 mile radius, we have a minus three here. On page number one, we don't have minus three. So we went over this in episode number one, but minus three is gonna stand for the level of declutter that we have put on the screen or should I say taken off the screen. So to change that level of declutter, we're just gonna use the clear button over here. And now you can see that minus three dropped off and a bunch of other waypoints populated here. 
So we're going to go back to minus three on the declutter. Now down here in the lower right, we also have our wind speed and direction. You also notice a little indicator up here in the top left that says TCAS. I'm just going to hit on the menu button over here on the right. And we have a couple different options here that we didn't have on page number one. First, we have the data on and off. And if we turn that on, you can see all the different bits of information here that are going to populate on the right hand side of the GPS. Now, because page number one already has a bunch of information all over it, I kind of like to leave this one as clutter free as I can. So I'm just going to go back in here and turn this off just for now. Below that, we also have the north up and track up. This is going to do the exact same thing that it did on page number one, but just to show you. And one thing that you're going to notice different that you don't see on page number one is we don't have that compass rose or arc anymore. So next down in the menu, we have the next rad on and off, so we can turn that on. Now, when we do turn these on, you will see that populate up here in the upper left hand corner of the GPS screen. Below the next rad, we have the TCAS on and off, and we've already got that on, so you can see that displayed up here as well. Now below that, we have two more fields here, and they're grayed out right now. The reason why these fields are grayed out is because we do not have the data information on. So to get that to populate, we're just going to turn the data on, and now we can go down and change some of these fields. That's going to be very similar to what we could do on the first page, but again, these are page specific, so you can have one set of fields set up for this page and a complete different set of information set up for page number one. Oh, and by the way, if you have any questions along the way today, post those down below in the comments section and I will get right back to you on those. So there is one more thing that you can do on this page that you cannot do on page one of the navigation menu. So if you come down here to the lower knob right here and you press in on the inner knob, you'll see that we have some information that's gonna populate up here and that is giving us the waypoint information of your cursor. So now we can actually move the cursor around on the screen and it will move the map as well. How cool is that? Now the only thing with this is once you go and press this cursor again, it's gonna go back to wherever your plane is. So the only way to really go through the different pages here on the navigation menu is you've got to use this inner knob so once you've kind of seen what you need to see you've got to press back on that knob again so that you can go between the different pages here all right so that finishes up page two of the navigation menu let's move on to page number three now as you can see here we have the terrain map one of the other things that you may notice is different on this page from the other two pages is the map heading we are no longer in north up mode. We are now in track up mode. And unfortunately, if we go over here to the menu, there's nothing that we can really do to change that. So you can still use your clear to declutter some of the waypoints on the screen, but you don't have different levels of declutter like we had on the other two pages. The enter button pretty much does nothing. The direct to is the direct to button. We also have in the upper right hand corner the MSL, so that'll give us our altitude. We have the wind direction in the upper left hand corner. It does not give us the wind speed, unfortunately. And we also have the level of zoom down here for our map. So that's pretty much all we can do on page three of the navigation menu. So let's move on to page number four. This is gonna be our traffic page, as you can see up here in the upper left-hand corner of the GPS screen, has displayed traffic. In the middle of the screen has the TRK again, so like page number three, this also is gonna be tracking up and not displayed as north up like we have on pages one and page two. So don't let that confuse you if you are gonna be flipping between pages two, three, and four because you are gonna see a change in the way the map is displayed. I think that's what is gonna benefit you to use this page is because you're able to use these rings and really get a good idea of how far another plane or aircraft is from you. Okay, so that takes care of page number four. Let's move on to page number five. 
page number five is kind of a really important page and has a lot of information on it for us. This is going to give us all the approach frequencies, ATIS, clearance, ground, tower, ILS for the airport that we are departing from. So the other cool thing that we can do on this page is we can populate the cursor by just pressing in on the inner knob here. And if we scroll down, is put your cursor over the frequency that you want to use. Hit the enter button. It automatically puts it in the standby over here in the com. We hit the transfer and boop, there we go. It is now in the active. So that's pretty cool that if you have to quickly tune to a frequency or you're unsure of any frequencies for the airport you're at, you can go right to page five of your navigation menu. The menu button doesn't do anything here and the clear doesn't do anything as well. Keep in mind though, to be able to scroll back through the other pages of the navigation menu, you have to get rid of the cursor. To get rid of that cursor is the same process. We're just gonna tap in on the inner knob and now we can use the inner knob to scroll between all the different pages again. All right, so that's gonna wrap us up for today. If you guys have any questions, post those down below in the comments section and I will get right back to you. Thanks everybody for joining us on the channel today. If you haven't done so, hit that subscribe, tick that little bell and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching everybody.